In this episode of Open Framework Super Basics, we're doing more drawing using polyline complex drawing objects. We're making loads and loads of curves, and we're working out what we can do with them, including firing a marble around on screen, doing weird sine wave stuff, awesome squiggles, making 50s squiggly artwork automatically, squiggly generative drawing, much more interesting. Last time we looked at a whole range of different things and we were particularly looking at drawing and we investigated how we could move from drawing a single line with an X and a Y start point and an X and a Y end point to drawing line objects that become one object but have multiple X, Y points within them. And this we looked at is a polyline. So we're going to keep looking at polyline again this week and investigate a couple more things that we can do working with open frameworks. In my code from last time, I'd made in my header file an OF polyline object called my line and then in my cpp my main file i just set up the window title and sort of background and i'd set the frame rate now in the comments that i had between last week and this week somebody sent me a question saying hey uh i like your colors on screen but i can't see the dark purples so if you're using xcode this is what you can do to change the colors. I like working with this particular color set on a dark background, and it's just a thing that Xcode will do to help me recognize this is a variable, this is a string in quotes, and so on. So they were saying these void statements, the return statements from functions, and some of the numbers, the dark purple on the dark background, rookie error. And I was thinking, oh my God, yeah. So I'm gonna fix that now. If I go to Xcode, preferences in the fonts and colors, I can go and change what I've got. And I've got the standard uh, default dark here. And I could move to the high contrast. Maybe we'll try the high contrast. But I could go in to dusk and choose a particular thing like the keywords and say, I want to change that. To be a bit brighter. Yeah, maybe that'll help. And then numbers and characters also make them a bit better. And anything that's a URL will make that brighter too. And just increase the contrast on all of the stuff. And hopefully that'll be a little bit clearer when it's coming out recording on the video, particularly as this comment was from uh, from one of pe the people that are subscribed. So thank you very much um, that they're watching it in slightly lower resolution. So hopefully that little trick will help and I'll make sure that I keep the font size large. So I've made a polyline called my line. I've set up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say in the draw routine, my line dot draw draw being something that the polyline object knows how to do so i've got a line but it's got nothing in it and what i'd like to do is instead of just having it add stuff all the time when i press a key i want it to draw me 20 lines just like we did last time so in my key pressed routine i'm going to add another if and in brackets, a conditional part of it, key is equal to S. Uh, no, I think we'll call it D for draw a line. And here, I'm going to make a loop that says, make me 10 lines. So I'm going to say uh, 4 int I 
equals starting at zero, while i is less than 10, uh, and then i plus plus, and then I'm going to say uh, my line dot add vertex, which we saw before, of random get width and then random of get height and that's going to add in 10 vertices, 10 points into my line object, just like, just like from my drawing. It's going to add in these 10 new points, and the object will automatically, when I ask it to, link them together with a straight line. So that's going to add 10 points into my line. And then I'm going to set OF, set color. And I'm going to draw this in a dark blue. So we want 50 red, 50 green, 255 blue. And I'm going to set my line width again to be 10. So I have a thick line and it'll draw out these 10 points. So I compile and run this. Tell it to draw. And now every time I press the D key, It's adding me more lines. What I want to do is every time I press a D key, make it make a new set of 10 points. So I can go to my function that I'm building here. When the D key is pressed, I want to say my line dot clear. And this is a thing that it knows how to do. And so it'll empty all of the points out of my line and then add in 10 new ones. So I run this now and I'm going to run it up full screen. And when I hit the D key, it's going to work out the width and the height and draw me 10 new points every time I press the key, which is cool. We saw this last time. What I want to do that's different is show that we can decide how these different points in my line are connected. So instead of saying my line add vertex, I'm going to copy this, just comment the previous one out with two slashes, and say my line curve two. And we can give it a three dimensional point, an x, y, and z, like we've seen before, or we can give it a two dimensional point. So I'm going to say curve two. Exactly the same again. OF random get width, find somewhere in the width. OF random get height, find somewhere in the height. And now what we get is there's a bunch of different ways that you can make curves, um, different mathematical formulas, but we're just using a standard one. So when I press the D key, I get these groovy curved lines. And if I hold down the D key, then I'm getting something much more interesting. What's awesome as well is if I finish this, if when I finish drawing, I say my line dot close, when it finishes the object, it'll take its last point and its first point and tell it that these two vertices, the first one and the last one, i.e. number 0 and 110, should join up. So now we'll actually get a complete object closed as a line rather than this beginning one point ending somewhere else. So we run this now, run it up full screen, and now I can get these beautiful blobby objects. And I could put in as many points as I like. Now, there's a bunch of other really cool things. And if I come back and I press full screen, you can see it's dynamically choosing again. 
Oh, that's so cool. And of course, I could be running this in an update loop if I wanted and have these beautiful kind of sine wave type things. And I could be adding and subtracting the amount of points to make it more and more complicated or less and less complicated. In fact, let's, let's go and have a look at that. So if I say my line is 100, so now it's going to draw 100 points and join them by curves. Compiling away, going to build a thing. And now run this full screen. And there, we get these beautiful kind of smooth curves within the width of the screen. There's a thing that I want to show you that's something else interesting that we can do. Because we've got this object and it's full of all these points, I'm just going to take this down to 10 points again, my line dot close. Now, there's a command where I can say, tell me where the position of each point is, and also find out how long this line is, you know, this big curved stretched out line. So nearly run out of paper, but with my line, I can say, add me a number of points. One, two, three, four, five, for instance, all the way around. And we've seen how we can set a curve to run through x, y, 1, x, y, 2, x, y, 3, etc. And this line has a length. And what I can do is say, tell me the position at x percent through the line. So what I could do is I could uh, say, you know, tell me exactly halfway through the length of this line irrespective of quite where the points are, it'll be working out from the curves. So we can do all kinds of neat things. We can also say, find me the bounding box and uh, at any point on the line, find me the tangent to that line so I can decide which way each point of the curve is working and all the kind of useful things. So it's all in the documentation. I'm not going to go into every piece, but have, do, do have a look at it. But what I want to do is just track through this line. So, I'm going to uh, go to my header file and I'll make a float variable called line percent. And that's going to track how far I am through the length of the line because I'm going to do some fun things with it in a moment. And then in my setup, I'm going to explicitly say line percent equals 0, 0.0. So I'm going to force a decimal number into it so that the compiler, when it compiles, knows that this is explicitly needs to be a floating point number. And then in my update, I'm going to add a little bit to percent. So every time a frame runs, I'm going to say uh, increase line percent a tiny amount. So I'm going to say line percent plus e oops, plus equals. That's the same as saying equals line percent plus a bit. And we've seen this before with um, loops where you can say plus plus means add one. Uh, I've said this before, program I joke. C plus plus, it's like C plus one. It's one better than C. Uh, so line percent plus equals 0.05. Uh, so a tiny bit. It's got every frame that runs is going to increment a tiny bit. And I'm going to say my line draw, whatever draw, line I've drawn. And then I'm going to make a circle and I want it to draw on the line at a particular point. And I can say my line dot get point at a particular length through the line or get point at a percentage. And what it says is go to the object and find the x and the y point at a particular percentage. So maybe on this drawing, this is 50%. So I could say, find me this x, y point here at 50% through my line. So I'm going to use my line, get point at percent, and then I'm just going to pass it this thing, line percent. So I made line percent as a float. I put naught into it, and every frame I'm adding 0.05 to it here. So I'm just incrementing it a little bit every frame that runs. So I can get that, but I'm going to use this as the x, y point to draw a blob. So I am going to say, uh, let's set a new color. So I've set a color here. 
uh, to be blue for the lines, and I'm going to say, oh, I've set my color to be 255 naught naught. So now it's going to be bright red. And I'm going to say, OF draw, and I can draw a rectangle or a three dimensional box or a cone or a grid or a line or a, all kinds of different things that Open Frameworks can draw. But I'm just going to tell it to draw a circle. And the circle wants an X and a Y point and the radius. So I'm going to supply it the x and the y point coming back from get my point uh, get point at percent and then give it a radius at the end and all being well this will do exactly what I want. So now if I run my code when I hit the D key it's going to make me this amazing squiggle with the number of points in. So I hit D. And it's not doing it. Let's debug and see what's going on. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say my line close, line percent equals zero. So I'm going to reset line percent. So now when we hit the D key, we're going to reset the line percent. There it is. Okay, so this is working. I run it full screen. And it draws me a circle and runs around tracing that. So it's a bit too fast. So I am going to finish this. I'm going to ask it to make me, uh, in my loop, 20 lines. And I'm going to make line percent a little bit less. Now, I could say I want it to run over X number of uh, seconds and time this instead but I'm doing it a bit crudely. So 0.01, and we can see it running a lot slower. So now, compiles runs, going to run it full screen, hit the D key. And that's just tracking the percent going up and up and up. Hit the D key again, and it's just saying, find the point of percent on this line. And I could move anything because I'm just getting this XY point. I could, if I wanted, um, output this to sound. I could output this to control motors. I could do anything that I like. And I can also, if I wanted, which we're going to do in a later video, is I can run this out to plotters and cool things like that. So we've got more awesome squiggles. And now we can manipulate these complicated objects. Um, doing all sorts of stuff. And again, we can do different colors and things with them. That's doing a little bit more with a polyline object and looking at how we can control it and we can manipulate it and we can find information about it. So uh, there'll be more drawing videos coming up. I'm going to be doing a lot more complicated stuff and doing some more generative things. But hit the subscribe button and leave me comments and I'll see you on the next video.